Yes, yes, yes. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Bo, and I am back with some more Truth and Facts. Shout out to everybody out there at the movement. As always, man, Truth and Facts about boxing in conjunction with Three Kings Boxing is sponsored by the movement. The movement consists of my man on with me right now, Big Cool from Colossal Boxing, Eastwick Boxing, Willie the Kid, Eastwick UK, Aaron Cooper, uh, 2K from Prodigy of Boxing, Three Kings Boxing itself, and Chris Seabone Henderson of Four Corners Boxing Talk. Man, we are joined again, ladies and gentlemen, with special guest and WBC contender, uh, future WBC champion, the undefeated from Louisiana. He got that nickname to everybody be like, where he get that from? But that's my man, Mr. Regis Progre. What's going on, Regis? What's up, with you, dog? How y'all doing? We doing good. We doing good. And then, of course, I'm good, man. I got my man. Uh, from Colossal Box and Talk, Big Cool was cracking, man. What's good, bro, man? How y'all doing tonight? We doing good, man. You know, good. I'm a little bit, you know, I'm a little bit down. The Cuban lost again, you know. It ain't been a good year for these Cubans, uh -huh. man. <laughs> yeah. Ain't been a good year for my Cubans, but it, hey, a great fight. So, uh, but tonight is all about the man, Regis Progre. And uh, y'all might be saying, why do you keep saying his name? Because if you talk to Regis, I finally got to say his name right. He'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, uh, you are training hard. The fight with Victor Postal finally looked like it's a go. And it's for a title mm -hmm. eliminator. Uh, it's, yeah. Let everybody know, man. Uh, are you The big question is, are you ready? Because this is going to be a huge step up against a guy like Victor Postal. Um, well, I'm definitely ready. You know, I wouldn't have took the fight if I wasn't ready. Um, I see a lot of holes in victim post. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, what's up with it? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely ready. You know, um, um, I always, you know, I, I love step up fights. A lot of the fights been, you know, a lot of my recent fights just been like step up fights and they've been like, you know, like with the last fight Joe did, it, it was a big step up. It's supposed to be a big step up fight for me and the pressure was on me. And I love pressure, you know. So when you put the pressure on me, I feel like I perform better. So this fight will be, it'll, it'll be a lot of pressure on me because Victor Paul Stahl is the ex-champion. He's only lost one fight to, you know, one of the pound for pound best right now is in Terrence Crawford. So if I can go ahead and, and, and beat Victor Paul Stahl worse than Crawford, it'll even stop him. I think, you know, it'll, it'll definitely get my name buzzing, you know, all around the boxing world for sure. Okay, okay, okay. Um... <clears throat> There are some challenges that Victor Postal can create. He's tall, he's rangy, but like you said, you see some holes in him. So, no shape, form, or fashion, I'm gonna ask the man to reveal his game plan. But I, I, this is what I want to ask you: is um, what are some of the uh, primary things that you see that right away when you went into training camp, you said, okay, I'm gonna have to do this a little differently if I want to be effective? Well, it's not nothing differently. You know, the whole thing is, you know, in and a lot of Victor Postal's fights, you know, he, he's tall and lanky, and, you know, basically he doesn't have no meat on his body, no legs, you know. So um, once he gets hit, he gets hurt a lot, you know. He, he does know how to survive, but at the same time, he when he gets hit, he gets hurt, you know. And with a puncher like me, I feel like with somebody like me, if, if I hurt him, I feel like it'll be over. You know, like his last fight, um, I don't know if you saw his last fight, you know, oh, he yeah. fought over there in Russia and he fought a dude that was like 14-0. He wasn't too much of nothing. And he dropped him three times. He officially dropped him once, but he actually dropped him three times. Um, Terrence Crawford, you know, um, of course, dropped him a couple of times. And um, Lucas Matisse, they hurt him too, you know. So I feel like, you know, with – I'm going, and it's 12 rounds, you know. We fight for a belt, so it's a 12-round fight. I'm going to hit him. I'm going to hit him flush. And, you know, when and when I hit people, I hurt them, you know. And when I hit people, I try to hurt them. I don't – I'm not trying to go out and, and box and stuff like I mean, of course, I can't box. It's boxing. For, but for me, it's a fight, you know. So when I go out there, I'm, I'm going to try, you know, I'm trying to destroy my opponent, you know. So I, I just I just see it's nothing basically differently that, you know, as far as my game plan go because I don't I – don't, you know, I train for myself. I don't train for other people. Of course, in training camp, you have specific sparring partners that, 
you know, that can imp that can mirror your opponent. But I mean, I just go out there and I do what I gotta do, you know. So I don't I don't like to study nobody or nothing like that. But I just I just like I said, I just go out there and do what I gotta do and I'm 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 just, you know, I can't wait. I'm ready. Now you mentioned sparring partners. Now you were originally from Louisiana, but you've been down there in Dallas. Uh, and no, Houston. Houston. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're in Houston. Uh -huh. And there are some good sparring down there, man. You got the Charlos, you got Spence, you got that whole situation. So there's some good sparring going on down there. Do you feel that yeah. going into the fight with Victor, you may have a little bit of an advantage because of the type of guys you are probably getting some sparring with? I feel like, yeah, not even just going to fight with Victor. I feel like going to any fight. That's, that's, that's definitely one of my big advantages is that. You know, my sparring partners, you know, that's a big, I'm coming to y'all, that's one of my big, you know, big advantages because I do have so much good work. My sparring partners push me so much. They always pushing me in the gym. They always pushing me every single day in training. And like I said, that's, it is, you know, so it's not, not only the fight with Victor Post Carl, but it's all my fights that I definitely credit my gym and I, I credit, you know, um, Houston, you know, where I'm living there because, it's just, it's so much good work here. Like, it's so, so much good work. In my gym, it's probably, it's, it's worked all the way from 115 pounds all the way up to heavyweight, you know, all the way up to 250, you know, and, and kind of a lot of sparring, not just one or two people, a lot of sparring for everybody, you know. So, I, I my sparring is just is excellent. My sparring is real good in the gym. It's excellent. And, you know, that's I definitely credit, you know, um, my gym to my success. Hey, cool. Jump in anytime. You got a question, man. Go ahead. All right, Regis. I was listening to your answer about not, uh, you know, about the challenges that you're supposed to uh, make present and that you said, you know, uh, that you don't necessarily watch film. But as you kind of, you know, climb up the ladders and your competition get better, do you kind of find yourself feeling the need to watch just a little bit more because, you know, some of these guys that you're going to be, you know, in the ring with, you know, have more tricks to the trade than a Victor Postal or anybody or a Joe Diaz you've been following in the past, or do you feel the need to kind of watch a little more film? Because I know you got a team that, you know, look at that, you know, look at film and break down, you know, things, but you got to look at it for yourself as a fighter, too, that they might not catch. Nah, I don't. I, I don't, man. I don't watch film on nobody, you know. Um, I just feel like I, I've studied a lot of boxing, a lot of great fighters. They don't watch film on nobody, you know, because in, in film it's just something like, you, you can watch them all you want, but you, you can't, in a film, you can't pick up how fast they are. In a film, you can't pick up how hard they hit. In a film, you can't pick up how durable a fighter is, you know. So that's why, you know, I just, I don't like watching film, you know, because, you know, it can, you know, you, you, you'll think one thing and then you get in a fight and it'll be a whole different thing, you know. So that's why, like me, now, I don't watch film. It, it'll be better if you watch. Um, of course, like you watch them live, that'll be better. But of course, I never saw the um, Victor Post all fight live, you know, but, um, as far as yeah, film, I, I you know I don't I don't think I should you know I don't think I watch film. That's what my team is for, and they can tell me certain things. And um, you know that's I I, I mean that's I, that's what I've been doing. You know I'm, I think I'll continue to do it. Okay, okay. Hey, I guess you 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 know you uh you know postal you know, Amir Mom and Jose Ramirez Jr. is an unofficial four man you know WBC you know uh, Jimmy Wilson tournament. I know you're not looking too far into the future, but what do you, what are your thoughts on um, that matchup between Ramirez Jr. and Amon? You know what I'm saying? Have you just watched those guys fight just in passing, not studying them at all? And if, if so, what do you think of them as fighters? Um, I, I think they're okay. You know, I, I definitely don't think it's fair that, you know, they got the – they fight they, because they actually fight for the belt. Me and Postal is fighting for the interim title, you know, um, and they actually fighting for the, the official belt, you know. I – I know it's a lot of politics in the game, of course, you know, but I'm ranked number two, and Jose Ramirez is ranked, I think, number four or something like that. No, I don't even know he's ranked number three or four or something, but I'm ranked number two, and Amir Mine is ranked number one, and he was ranked number one after he got knocked out. He got knocked out by Adrian Granados, and then he fought two no-name opponents off TV, and he's still ranked number one, you know, so... Of course, you know, I know I know how the game is, you know, it's politics and stuff like that, but I, as far as that fight goes, uh, I don't know. I think it's a 50, it's definitely a 50-50 fight. Um, 
Uh, I don't know. It's a 50-50 fight, man. I, I like um, Ramirez because, you know, his last fight against Mike Reed, he stopped him in the second round, you know. So that was definitely a big statement because Mike Reed was, um, he, I think he was 23-0 and 0 at the time, and he stopped him in the second round. So that was definitely um, a big statement, you know, that he made. Um, but as far as that, that fight, I think it's a 50-50 fight, you know. And, um, you know, I just, after I, after I get past post all that, I'll be looking at the winner of them. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, bro. Okay. Uh, let's. You know, I, I want to flip this here because I want to get your opinion on this. When I look at the ranking system, the only one that has you ranked in the top fifteen is WBC, and I'm looking at some of these other guys: Ivan Baranci, uh, Tro Trovanovsky, uh, Okada, um, Antonio DeMarco. I mean, I'm just now. I'm just. I'm like. Ain't no way yeah. he did better than you. So do you feel just a bit disrespected by the other governing mm -hmm. bodies, or is this just fruit uh, fuel to the fire for you? Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's kind of both. It's definitely disrespect, you know, that no none of them dudes rank me, you know, in in their top fifteen, and I'm better than I'm pretty sure I'm I'm one of the best hundred forty pounders in the world. But it it, adds, it only adds fuel to the fire, you know. When I get on TV, that's why I always have a chip on my shoulder, you know. In the last fight with the Joe Diaz fight. I felt the same kind of disrespect and, you know, um, you know, pre the post fight interview, you know, I was just, I say what I got in my mind, you know, so it's definitely, you know, it's a little disrespect, but at the same time, it does add you to the fire and, you know, at the end of the day, the, the cream going to rise, you know, the best, the best is definitely going to, going to rise to the top, you know, so, um, they, they can have all those rankings and all that stuff, you know, but I'm, you know, I, I fight all those dudes and it's, it's, I'm, it's, it's gonna happen for me no matter what. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I want to ask you this about the fighters' mentality. I think a lot of times this gets underplayed. Um, if if there is a boxer out there, let's even if you know, uh, well, man, this guy can't beat that guy. Let's say you know you can't beat him, but in your mind, in your eyes, publicly, if you have the fighters' mentality, you should never admit that some dude is gonna beat you or give a, an indication that you don't want to fight. Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, you definitely don't want to never admit that, you know, um, somebody can be. If you're a fighter, I mean, the thing is, fighters are, aren't scared of other fighters. I don't think, you know, well, my mindset is I'm not scared of no other fighter. You know, I, I'm not scared of even heavyweight. You know, I'm not, I'm a fighter, you know, but yeah, I, I definitely don't think, you know, no fighter scared of other fighters. It's, it's not about the fighters, though. You know, people don't really don't get the business side of things. It's the managers and the promoters that set the fights up, you know. So it's, it's people can try to say things all they want and try to say, oh, this fighter's scared, this fighter, oh, this fighter's scared, this fighter. But at the end of the day, though, the fighters don't set up the fights. The promoters and the managers set up the fights, you know. So people, I know, you know, it's all, it, I watch like Instagram and all kinds of fantasy fights and all that people, and, and it's a lot of fights go back and forth on Twitter and, and Instagram and all that. But at the end of the day, the fighters don't set up the fights. The, the managers and the promoters, they don't want to set up the fight, um, you know, and, and shit. That's just how the business is, you know. But, of course, nobody is supposed to nobody is supposed to admit. And I don't think, I, I just don't think in my head that in, in, in my heart that other fighters are scared of other fighters. You know, I know right now the whole thing with Errol Thur uh, Errol, um, Keith Thurman and Errol Spence is going on. You know, people saying Keith Thurman is scared of Errol Spence. I, it, that's definitely not true, you know. Um, I, I definitely don't think that's true. But you know, they I, I'm pretty sure they're gonna wait until it builds up and you know, and, and make it a, a bigger fight than it's supposed to be. Okay. Now let me ask you this, man, because uh you seem to be on social media but you've been able to avoid a lot of the, the quote unquote uh, uh, bullshit that cat that other fighters get trapped into. Like a lot of fighters get trapped into a certain type of bullshit and social media and even outside the ring you've been able to avoid that do you think that's because you have a good team you have a good you know you, you got a good team you got family behind you just got so many things pointing you in the right direction that you know you don't let yourself get distracted by that yeah well i mean that i, I think i'm just a little more mature at the same time you know something i see of course the thing is like i see everything you know if somebody tags me something I see a lot of that stuff or somebody hit me up and saying, oh, this person said this about you. So 
So I see, I mean, I see all that stuff, but at the same time, yeah, it, it is about the team. But more more importantly, it's just about being mature. You know, you definitely have to be mature and don't respond to that because that doesn't matter. You know, if, especially if somebody says something about me, like, as a fighter, that it doesn't matter. Now, if somebody is, you know, talking about my family, my kids, then, you know, then that's that's a difference, you know. But as far as, like, me, I'm, I mean, I'm not. It, that, that that stuff doesn't bother me, you know, because I know the business, you know, most people don't know the business side of boxing, you know, it's a lot of people, they just say things and they don't understand what they're saying, so, and you can't even explain that, you know, the business side of boxing is something that you can't even explain, it's one of the dirtiest businesses in the world, mm. and you just can't explain it, you know, so, um, it's in, you de- so you definitely, I definitely won't go trying to fight with nobody and have Twitter fingers and all that stuff because of that, because it doesn't make sense, you know, but, to answer your question, yeah, it's just about it's just about being mature and knowing that you don't need to answer that. And I try to and another thing, I just try to stay on social media as much as I can. You know, um, it's for me, it's nothing on there. If I'm not getting no money from it, I'm not gonna do it. So it, it doesn't even make sense to be doing it. You know. Uh, be cool. Go ahead. Hey, I, I I got a question. Um, damn, I'm not trying to throw. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Besides power, what do you, what would you consider? I don't know if you consider your power your, your your biggest asset or whatever. But besides the power, what do you feel surprises your opponents the most when they get inside the ring with you? You know, if anything, you know, fighters talk about the fight. What if they let you know that surprised them? You know, that you possess besides the power. Um, I I feel like I, I honestly feel like it's my my ring IQ. A, a lot of people look at me like as a power puncher and a brawler. Um, but if you if you really pay attention to my career, like if you look. My, so my first fight on, I, I try to do something different in every fight. So my first fight on, on Showtime, I threw, I think, over 100 punches around. You know, um, it was like, I threw like nine, I threw like, I think, a thousand punches in an eight-round fight, you know. So they was like, oh, so he's a he's a volume puncher, right? That's, that's what he, he made as a volume puncher. And then after that, um, I had a, I think, I, yeah, I stopped Abel Ramos. Um, I cut him up real bad, so they was like, "Oh, I think he has a little more power than we think he has." But I still think he's a volume puncher. Then after that, I had a first round knockout of Aaron Herrera, and and mind you, this is the same Aaron Herrera that went the distance with Jesse Vargas. Well, I think he knocked him out in the tenth round or something like that, and he went the distance with Brandon Rios or something. He went longer than that. I I, I mean, I knocked him out in the first round, and he went a long distance with them. And so they was like, "Oh, maybe he's a power puncher." And now with Joel Diaz, people are calling me a power puncher. So um, I just feel I can do everything. I, I know my – but I feel like my main thing is that my IQ is high. My boxing IQ is – I feel like it's high to most people. Um, and and I'm accurate. I'm definitely accurate with my shots. So that's, that's two things. But I just, feel like my, I just feel like my IQ is higher than most people. And, you know, and just my, my love of it, the, the hunger that I have. I got another question. Thinking about your your ride to this point in your career, kind of reminds me of Andre uh, Ward in terms of being brought. I don't know if it was planned, but being brought along slow, slowly, and kind of feeling like now, 2018, this is your your moment. Because a lot of people look at you as the guy to take over the junior welterweight, you know, division. Do you kind of? I don't know if you follow his career back then and how he was brought along, but do you kind of see a little similarity with how your promoter brought you along, you know, slowly, but you know you you know, slowly stepped up your competition and now you feel like you're ready, you got the big fight with Postal. Do you feel that there's some similarities in how you all uh, brought, brought along in your career? Um, I won't say that. I mean, I think he was brought along a little slower than I was Um, because, I mean, I only, like I said, I only have 20 fights and it's, and, and he was, a, I mean, he was an Olympian, you know, so he was definitely getting paid and stuff like that real good. Um, I don't know. I didn't, I'm, I'm not, I can't say I'm a, I'm not an Andre Wall fan. I'm definitely an Andre Wall fan, but I didn't study his whole career as far as like being brought along, you know, slow and stuff like that. But I don't know. I don't know if if I can compare that. It's I, okay. I, it's, I guess it's something to think about. But I never I never compared my career to Andre Wall's career. I always felt like, you know, he was on a he was he was he was brought along slowly, but he was at you know he still had a little a little name because of the Olympics. You know, I didn't have none of that stuff, so. It's a little, it's a little different. The look, the career is definitely different. Okay. okay. I got you know. Go ahead, bro. Okay, man. Um, fight day, time for the fight. 
what mm. song are you gonna come out to in the fight, man? Like, what what's the song that when you come out, people will know that that song, that song definitely characterizes who you are as a fighter. Well, you know what? I have my um, own. I have. A, I definitely have a lot of friends that are artists. Um, but my, I have the Woo Woo song. I have my own song. You know, it's called the Woo Woo, Woo Anthem. And you know, if you go on YouTube, you can you can see the video um, by Benji Billion. So that's probably the song that I'll come out to again. I think we, I think he's trying to do like some type of remix to it. And it's gonna be, you know, the first one was like real fire, but the second one is gonna be even, you know, it's gonna be even better. You know, so the Woo Woo, Woo Anthem by Benji Billion. That's what I come out to. Probably part two. Oh man, okay. <laughs> you gonna come out to the song and let them know it's on, right? So, um, we when we last talked, you were saying how um, boxing necessarily really wasn't something in your family, so you kind of wondered where you got it from. Now that you have kids, now that you know the business of boxing, and now you know how what kind of game it is now. Um, would you encourage your son to go into boxing? If that's what he wanted uh, no. to do? Definitely, definitely would. No, no, I definitely wouldn't, man. Boxing, the, like I said, man, the business side of boxing is the dirtiest, the dirtiest game in the world. People don't realize when you say it, it's so dirty, it's so it's so much politics, it's so hard. Boxing is just so, it's just so hard, man. Like, it, I just feel for every, I mean, I'm I'm like kind of the, one of the lucky ones, you know, but um, to, to actually be, you know, fighting for titles and fighting for money and stuff like that. But it's just, it's just too hard, man. I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't want my son to, you know, to box because it's just, it's too hard, you know, not even, not, it's not even the, um, the physical side of things, the training side, it's just the, the mental, the mental exhaustion and the, like I said, the business side of things, it's just, it's too hard to be dealing with. It's very, very hard to be dealing with and if you ask any fighter, most fighters don't want their kids to fight, you know, you ask any fighter, mm -hmm. most of them like, I'm doing this so my kids wouldn't have to do it and you know, they wouldn't have to go through the things that I'm, I'm going through, you know. So I definitely, yeah, it's definitely a no. Now, of course, if he wants to do it, you know, you can't stop the kids from doing what they want to do. If he, if he wants to do it and he loves it, you know, just like Chris Eubank Jr., um, his son is doing it, then, hey, you know, I, more power to him. But I'll just tell him, you know, it's I'll just tell him what the game is, you know, how hard it is. And, you know, at, at least he wouldn't have to deal with the business side like I had to deal with the business side because I, at least I know about a little bit of it. But yeah, as far as boxing goes, man, it's, I wouldn't want my son to do it. Okay. And do you, I, I'm, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, be cool. All right, Avery, I got to ask you, because I just did a video about you uh, calling out Adrian Brown, so I got to ask you um, <laughs> on this interview, you know what I'm saying? We talked about this I last time. I definitely like that. We, we actually talked to him about this <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Time. Go ahead. But uh, you said that you, you'd be the first one to stop him. What did his, you know, what did his uh, arsenal or his status make you feel that you'd be the first one to stop him? Because Marcos Maidana, you know, strong as he was, he wasn't able to do it. And, you know what I'm saying? What do you feel uh, would give you that, you know, that extra arm to be able to, you know, stop Adrian Broner and be the first man to do that? I, I mean, I just think so. First off, Adrian Broner, when he fights punches, you know, once, once he gets hit, he kind of shells up. He kind of balls up. He doesn't really fight back too much if he, if he feels that, if somebody's a puncher. I'm definitely a puncher and I'm accurate. You know, um Marcus Medina is strong, but he's not accurate, you know. Um and then yeah, I just feel like I was I'm just more accurate than Marcus Medina and I'm fast. That's different. I'm fast. I can I can definitely be you know, I can definitely be explosive and I'm fast. You know, Marcus Medina is not explosive. He's not fast. You know, he, he's a big puncher. He's a big power puncher. He's strong. But he telegraphs a lot of his shots, and he, like I said, he's not fast. He's not that accurate with his punches. He just throws punches wild, you know. Um, so I feel like the difference with me is that I'm, I'm, I'm fast. I'm way, I'm way faster. I might be even faster, Asia, but I know he's fast too. But I, you know, I feel like I can, you know, potentially be faster than him. But I'm accurate at the same time. I'm accurate, and you know, and and I'll try to stop him at the same time. So yeah, I think that'll be, you know, I think that'll be the difference. I think it'll be a good fight if it happens, too. So yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be a good line. fight, man. One day in the future, hopefully it'll be a good fight. I, hope he, I definitely hope he um, beats um, Omo Figueroa on April, I think, 21st. And, um, yeah, I, I think I should be a good fight. 
which which brings me up to yeah. this, man. Uh, is there a point in time when we might see Regis in a 147-pound division? Um, probably so. Yeah, most likely in one day in the future. I definitely want to do what Terrence Crawford did. I definitely want to take over the 140 class first. I definitely want to take all the belts at 140. Um, but, of course, money is definitely, you know, we in it, of course, you know, we love it, but we in it for the money. So if it's a big fight at 147 in 2019 or something like that before I even grab all the belts at 140, then, yeah, I'll probably go to 147 one day, you know, but I'm definitely not thinking about that right now. Right now, it's, you know, it'll be, it's 140 right now until, until I, I at least get some of the belts, you know, it's four belts out. So, you know, I, I definitely want at least a few of them before I even think about going to 147. Now, uh, I asked you this last time, I'm going to ask you again. <laughs> Is there anybody at 140 that you're looking at like lunch, or is all of these dudes lunch to you? Honestly, man, all these dudes lunch to me. All of them. <laughs> you know, all of them. All of them. Every last one of them. I just can't see none of these dudes stopping me right now. I can't. You know, um, it's, it's one fighter um, that is good, and I think me and him will have a real good fight down the line, and that's a um, dude named Josh Taylor from um, England. Over there, well, mm-hmm. Scotland or something like that. He. He he's good. He has a he and he definitely has a um a good resume also. You know because a lot of these dudes. I mean a lot of these dudes. They don't. If you and I said I, I think I texted or something like that. I said the other day on Instagram or something. If you look at the records of the twenty fight ver anybody in the one forty class twenty fight versus twenty fight, and you look at them versus me, and you'll see like I actually fought some. You know I fought how many undefeated fights I fought. How many good people with good records that I fought? You know, you look at like Adrian Broner. Look at Adrian Broner, 20th fight on box track. He fought a dude named John Revis, who was like four and, um, I don't know what his record was, four and 20 or something like that. You know, at, at his 20th fight, and you look at my 20th fight, I fought Joel Diaz Jr., which was 23 and over 19 knockouts, you know. So it's, I, I mean, it's just, a, you know, if you look, if you compare records to records at 20 fights, then yeah. Uh, I, I, it's, it's not too many people that you know that that can you know compare to me right now. Twenty fights versus twenty fights. That's why I'm on a different level than all those dudes because you know at my twenty fights I fought you know some some you know uh, better competition. All right. Uh, you got anything else for Big Cool? No, nah, that wraps it up for me, man. Yeah, do the same thing for me because you know I, I actually talk to uh, Regis. I, I text him every now and then, <laughs> but for the most part, man, he be working. He be making me mad. I'd be like, man, I got to get my old ass in the gym, man. This young boy out here killing me, man. <laughs> yeah, hey, man, I, mean, I like uh, to see that, though, the fighter, man. Yeah. The fighter is young. Yeah. Yeah, we, I'm young, too, but as a fighter, man, we like to see that. He take the sports series. I mentioned it in the video, man. He eat, sleep, live boxing, which is going to take him even further than just his natural ability. So I actually went to the gym. Man, so. Like, check it out. I actually went to the gym, and I did this uh, one training thing, his uh, – coach had him doing where you have to push this thing with the weights on it and he had him push it forward bring it back push it forward bring it back and i'm watching this thing and he's doing and doing i did that thing one time i said man fuck this man <laughs> <laughs> yeah man that was a killer that day that was that was definitely a killer that day it was man y'all don't even understand that day man that, and look that was my second workout my second of three so it was definitely a, a, a killer workout i had to do that day That's it right. killed me that's right. Well, it shows off in the ring. So we want to thank him for being here as always. Regis, tell everybody what's going on, where they can follow you, and the day of the fight and when it's going down, man. Um, I so follow me on yeah, my Insta. Everything is Regis Torbery. Um, R E G I S T R O G R A I S. That's um, and I think www.registorbery.com is my website. And yeah, man, March night, tune in Showtime. You know, me and Postal, it's gonna be a real. I think it's gonna be, you know, not just a good fight, you know, for me or Postal, but it's gonna be a good fight for boxing. It's an interesting to fight because, you know, I'm I'm hungry, he's hungry, but just for different reasons. You know, I'm hungry. I never had the belt. I want the belt. I feel like, you know, I, like you said with the rankings, I feel like I'm not getting the the recognition I deserve, and you know, so I definitely want to prove people that I belong. You know, I belong in that. In it, you know, in that category, and he is an ex champion, he wants to get his belt back. You know, he wants to get another belt, so 
um, it, it'll be a good fight. We 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 definitely home to fight from different, you know, from different places. All right, be cool. Tell everybody, tell everybody when they can find you, with my brother. Um, hey, they can yeah, find me at the Oh, go ahead. Good. Oh, they can find me at Colossal Boxing CBT on YouTube, Colossal Boxing Talk on Facebook page on Facebook. Find me on your channel, Project Boxing Talk, uh, Eastwood Boxing. Everything, man. We, you know, the movement umbrella, man. You catch me everywhere. All right, all right. And of course, it's your boy Bo. Truth the facts about boxing. Uh, my man Bernard, uh, Detective B, also part of the show. My man William Kidd, Eastwood Boxing, part of the show. Uh, 2K Prodigy Boxing. Uh, man, Aaron Cooper. Uh, East Week UK. Like we said, man, the movement umbrella, you can catch it. We want to thank Regis for taking time out. As y'all can see, he's he's up out and about, but he still took some time out to talk to us. And we appreciate that, Regis. And man, hey, we're going to be cheering for you, my brother. So thank everybody for being here. Oh, yeah. And congratulations. And congratulations on the brother your son, too, man. No problem. Okay. Oh, oh. You said congratulations on what? On the brother his son. Oh, snap. I didn't know that. You had a boy? So, which one of y'all? You're not talking about me, huh? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, both talking to you. Oh, no. I have I have two. I got a boy and a girl. My son is... Um, my son, not the not word of my son. My son is four. My daughter's one. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, because I didn't know you had kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Why, okay. yeah my son is four. daughter's one. I thought you were talking to me about the birth of my son. Oh, yeah, I have, I haven't birthed in a while. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, well, congratulations, man. Anyway, you know. You got, oh, hey, oh, hey, man. you got a, uh, so your daughter is the oldest? No, no, my son. My son, my son is son. four and my daughter is one. All right, so I got to ask you, man, you're a fighter, right? And you got a daughter. Yeah. Is she daddy's little girl? Mm -hmm. Does she melt your heart, man? Man, she got definitely got my heart, but she's not daddy's girl yet. She she she's still with her mom. My son is actually close with me okay. right now. Yeah, cause he be we do me a lot of stuff like that. But yeah, she 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 more with her mama right now. She both of us, but she more with her mom and stuff like that right now. Okay, okay, yeah. I, I'm gonna say be careful because I got a little girl. and I can tell you, it kind of weakens that fighter in you, man. <laughs> oh yeah, she, I know, man. I already know. That's why I heard once she start talking and stuff like that, I know it's gonna be over for me. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right, Regis, man. Thanks for being here, man. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the weekend, man. God bless everybody out there. Yeah, y'all too, man. Thanks for having me.